At least 560 people have died in protests, riots and clashes that took place in Bangladesh in recent weeks, the Pratham Allo news outlet reported. As of the evening of August the 7th, 232 deaths were known to have occurred in the three days following the resignation of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Prior to that, some 328 people were killed in clashes from July the 16th to August the 4th. On August the 5th, amid massive anti-government protests, Sheikh Hasina resigned and left the country. A caretaker government was formed. On August the 6th, Nobel Peace Prize winner Mohamed Yunus was appointed as its head. Student leaders in Bangladesh have asked supporters to guard Hindu temples and churches as diplomats and rights groups expressed concerns over the reports of attacks on minority groups after the Prime Minister resigned amid a national uprising. Miscreants are systematically attacking various public and private institutions to prove the students' movement wrong. Chittagong University coordinator Russell Ahmed told the Bangla Tribune newspaper. Nahid Islam, a student at Dhaka University and one of the protest organizers, told local media, there is no grouping or division among us. We are against any kind of religious incitement, sabotage or division. We will prevent any such attempts. The main opposition Bangladesh Nationalist Party urged people to exercise restraint in what it said was a transitional moment on our democratic path. It is our duty to protect all Bangladeshis, irrespective of religion and politics, from discriminatory violence and not to harass any particular community, create division or seek vengeance. Muslims, Hindus, Christians, Buddhists, believers, atheists, no one will be left behind or be prejudiced on our democratic path. Together we are all proudly Bangladeshis. Tariq Rahman, the Bangladesh Nationalist Party's acting chair, wrote on X. Riots broke out in a number of cities across the country following the protests. The main participants in these actions were the student youth who were dissatisfied with high unemployment and lack of prospects. Before Sheikh Hasina's resignation, they had protested against the system of job quotas for relatives of participants in the 1971 War of Independence. Gradually, the situation in the country heated up and the demonstrations turned into clashes. Residents of Sudza in Kursk region have complained to the acting governor about the lack of shelters in the area, according to Russian telegram channels. Complaints have flooded the social media of the acting governor of the Kursk region, Alexei Smirnov, following yesterday's massive shelling of Sudza, allegedly by Ukrainian forces. One resident's comment, cited by the Brief channel, read, When will you set up shelters? How long will you torment people? Users have also insisted on the need for concrete shelters, noting the large number of people at bus stops. In response, the Kursk region government stated that there are designated areas in the region where residents can seek refuge during attacks. Of course, there are shelters. All information about them has been published on official resources, said Yulia Abramova, head of the regional government's press office. Meanwhile, the regional head announced that all emergency services in the Kursk region have been placed on heightened alert and that medical facilities are increasing their supplies of donor blood. Recently, Russian sources claimed that Ukrainian forces conducted a series of cross-border raids into Kursk Oblast. According to these claims, Ukrainian forces were advancing towards Russian positions near Nikolaevo Darino, and Oleshnya in Kursk Oblast, located northwest of the Ukrainian city of Sumy and along the Russian-Ukrainian frontier. Russian military bloggers further claimed that Ukrainian forces had attacked from two different directions, one from the Sudza checkpoint and another from the village of Nov in Ukrainian's Sumy Oblast, moving towards Nikolaevo Darino in Russia's Kursk Oblast. The Russian Ministry of Defense asserted that Russian reserve units had responded to the Ukrainian assaults and an insider source indicated that elements of the Chechen Special Forces Unit, Akhmat, were also involved in repelling the attacks. Following the shelling of Sudza, Russians have reported alleged attempts by Ukrainian forces to break through. It was reported that around 90% of residents had evacuated from four settlements in the Sudza district.
In response to the situation, Russia has redeployed reserves to the border area where Ukrainian forces were reportedly attempting a breakthrough. Thank you.